quit laughing now before we start. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Hope in the Light of Suicide. I'm Tammy White. I'm the founder and CEO of the Bobby White Foundation. And I'm here with my special guest, Ray Aminat from Heroes in Action. And I'm really excited to have him as a guest today because, um, you know, it's the getting towards the end of summer, school's beginning to start, and um, he has, you know, some great information and, um, I'm in it, be but before I get to Ray, I'm, I, I want to get some other things taken care of so I can make sure that we get all of Ray's information in in, our, in in the time that we have. So first off, of course, I want to thank um, John and Cage with Area 52 Media Group, um, our producer, Cage is our tech guy who does a super awesome job, and our sponsor, Delyn Gaston from The Mortgage Firm. Um, anything to do with mortgages and even if you just have questions if you're a first time home buyer or you want to you know get pre-qualified I mean just anything she is as far as I'm concerned the best expert that I know um, and we certainly want to thank her for supporting our show and as we mentioned last week we have Art for Hope coming up that's our annual fundraiser at September 7th um, again at the Hilton Garden Inn and we want to thank them. The Hilton Garden Inn has um, supported us through every event and, and they're, they're super, super awesome. Uh, one of our sponsors is uh, Annie's Pet Sitting Service. Um, she's, I think she's our, one of our Da Vinci sponsors. So we have several lev sponsor levels if you want to help support us. And with this event, um, it helps uh, fund our purple folder program and our hope scholarship program to help suicide loss survivors um, within our community and I brought some pictures of a couple uh, pieces of art that will be available um, this one here is called Captain's Roses um, the artist um, he was a very dear friend of mine actually I represented him for over 20 years his name is Neil Adamson Fortunately, we lost Neil last summer, and um, but this is one of his pieces. He is actually a world, a world award-winning watercolor artist, and um, the other piece I can't remember what the name of it is. It's Southern Cypress or something like that. But he he was actually a retired St. Petersburg um, firefighter. And um, we have several of his pieces that will be available at this event. And the event is free to attend. Um, we'll have gift basket raffles. Uh, we have a lottery board that we raffle off. Um, of course, there will be tons of art for sale, uh, orders, cash bar. Um, it's, it's a great night even though we're you know, tackling a tough subject. But it's a, it ends up being an uplifting event and hopefully help save more lives. So with all that away, I, again, I want to welcome Ray from Heroes in Action. And um, I met Ray a couple of years ago. You moved down here recently from St. Louis? Is from St. Louis uh, two years ago in July. I uh, moved okay. out here to Port Ritchie, Florida. And we welcome you. He, uh, I met him at one of our networking meetings, and he's brought a really great program um, to our area. Again, I mentioned um, it's the beginning of the school year. Right. And one, I mean, you focus on, um, on different programs for self-defense, anti-bullying, you know, and stuff like that. But I want to, and we're going to touch on all of them, because I think they're all very important. Um, 
But to begin with, we're going to focus on the children because sure. that seems to still be such a huge issue, bullying, and how it coincides with suicide in our youth. And um, I just actually found out that HEROES is actually an acronym yes. for... Helping everyone resist oppression every day safely. So any form of oppression that you can think of, whether it's bullying or spouse abuse, uh, sexual harassment, rape, anything where somebody is trying to control you, oppress you, um, those are the issues that we address throughout all of our programs for kids as well as all the way up to seniors. Yeah, because um, bullying isn't typically um, thought of, it, it's more thought of with the kids, or it's more spoken about with kids, but it actually happens, it can happen throughout a lifetime, you know, certain, different ages throughout a lifetime, all the way into your senior years. Yeah, the word bullying, as we had discussed earlier, morphs into another word. Um, a lot of people can look at that as the person as a narcissist, uh, somebody who's manipulating, controlling, and um, abusing or is abusive to you, whether it's in a relationship, uh, a co-worker. Um, so, uh, you know, people generally look at the word bully as something with childhood, but they morph into something else. It's still a bully, right. it's just called something called else. Called something else, yeah. right. So, let's go back to the, the children's thing. You have so many great programs, and um, one uh, children's self-defense program. And you have, a, you have different programs for the couple of the different age groups. So, I, I was looking, and you have a program, and this must be an interesting age group to deal with, and I bet they just kind of soak it all up, is kindergarten through fifth grade. Right. So tell us about that. So as far as the anti-bully program for K through 5, I don't teach physical hands-on self-defense right. going into schools. Um, this is, uh, most schools are zero tolerance, um, fight-free schools where they're not supposed to engage physically right. with each other. So this is more geared towards conflict resolution and anger management. So when I go into the schools, it's typically a one-hour school assembly based on the size of the school. If it's a, a small school, then I can do an all-school assembly. If it's a larger school, then I, I typically take kindergartners and first graders, put them in one mm -hmm. assembly, second and third graders in assembly, fourth and fifth graders in assembly. We try to educate the teachers by doing an in-service program for the staff. And then for those parents that are diehards that want to know everything that's going on with their child in the school, I'm willing to do a parent-teacher presentation that pretty much breaks down the program on what I do with the kids and the staff so that everyone's on the same page. Right. Everyone's speaking the same language. Right, right. So, for instance, when you're, um, when you're talking with these young children and, you know, it, it starts, it can, you know, bullying can start at a very young age. I mean, mm -hmm. and, and a, it, it's so sad and sometimes it's hard for me to even get the words out that with these children, bullying is, isn't it the highest cause for suicide deaths in children is due to bullying? Yes. Um, and we've had, and we've seen, uh, even with um, when the national suicide, um, the new hotline rolled out last summer, the nine eight eight number, they, it, it blew my mind. They had an increase such. An overall increase in phone calls, but they ha saw an increase in phone calls in children as young as six years old calling the hotline. Well, you, you want to think about when we had the COVID shutdown. Mm -hmm. Everyone was at home. Um, kids weren't able to be able to socialize with other kids. 
Um, then all of a sudden, all right, let's throw them all back together right. again. <laughs> and, you know, expecting them to behave the same way that they did pre-COVID. But, you know, when you have social barriers because of what COVID did, and now you're, uh, you're back into a situation where you're not used to verbalizing, socializing, mm -hmm. communicating. You were always with your family, and now you're thrown back in with a whole bunch of other kids again. But nobody's told you what to expect. What and, it's, and it's the same for every one of those kids. Yes. They're going through the same thing. They don't, they don't all don't know. So when you don't break down the school's expectations of behavior. Yeah, I understand. Depending on the school, if it's a private school, public school, if they if kids ride on the bus, okay? Right. Typically the most severe bullying is at the bus stop and on the bus. Mm -hmm. Then you're looking at in the hallways, you know, us walking right. past each other, um, uh, in the bathrooms, in the classrooms in when in the classrooms, when you have a substitute teacher that's not really paying attention, uh, or uh, so you want, yeah. you want to think about this. Yeah. During PE, during recess, uh, during lunch, uh, every area of that school, if you don't have an adult monitoring the situation, you know, one of the first things a bully does is they look around. They're looking for the adults. They're looking right. for the teachers. So if they see there's no teachers around, there's nobody around, then that kind of gives them the green light to pick on the target that they have. Right. Now, for, you know, first thing a criminal does in a neighborhood, what? the what? same thing. They right. look around. They're looking for adults. They're looking for people that are going to oust them or call 911 on yeah, them. Yeah, some, somebody that's going to stop them from whatever right. they're trying to do. So it's important for all the kids to learn how to be a good bystander and a good reporter. You know, you, know, the, you hear everyone say, if you see something, say, say something. something. Right. But what the bully does to counter that is snitches get stitches. Right. Okay, they threaten their intended target. If you say anything, your teacher's pet, your mama's boy, they use specific language that manipulate and control their intended target to not talk to their parents, to not talk to the teachers, the school counselor, or the school administrator. Mm -hmm. It's ba it's fear based. Right. You know, kids want to in schools get along. They want to be a part of a clique. They want to be a part of something. And when somebody is trying to silence me or uh, keep me from being popular or being as popular as them, you know, you know, if you're the nerd, if you're the band geek, if you're, you know, whatever right. clique that you're in or that you're trying to fit into, you're going to have somebody that's going to say, you're not worthy of this group. You're not worthy of being here. Just go home and die. And it's sad that kids actually say that to each other. They, they, they say it to each other. They text it to each right. other. They get on social media and try to get other people in on the conversation. Mm -hmm. So now it's not just one person saying it to you. You have a whole bunch of people that are unfriending you or they're supposedly your friends on social media, but now they're talking about you. And that just compiles and compiles. And, uh, you, know, uh, you know, parents, if you have a child that says, I don't feel good, you have to read the warning signs as far as a change in behavior, a change in your child's grades. If they say, I don't feel good, I'm sick, I want to stay home, they don't want to go to school, there's a greater problem there that you have to look at the root of the problem and find out what's going on with the schools. Right. Well, and sometimes um, we had an incident last year um, in one of the schools that was in Pinellas County. And and it, it it goes back to getting other people on board. You're you're the you're gonna, you're starting to be the bully, and you get other people to bully. We had this young girl. Um, it's coming up on the first anniversary of her taking her life. She was just 16 years old. A couple weeks from her 17th birthday. A couple weeks from starting her senior year of high school. And something happened within the group she was a member of, and. The whole group ended up 
bullying her and in a short period of five days is all she took her life when when you think your world is upside down the people that you trust in your life the people that you call friends and you see them for who they really are fake frauds liars backstabbers you know a, a, a person that goes through that you know from what I've learned because I was severely bullied is okay they're no longer my friends let me go find some new friends mm -hmm. but there's a lot of people that might not have that type of strength I, that that was a learned thing for me I had to acquire right. it and learn how to let people go and hey there's other people out there that I could be friends with you know, I'm, I, I want to speak to those of you in the audience that are watching. You know, if you have people in your life that are disrespecting you, that are backstabbing you, that are hurting you, get rid of them. Go find a new group. Find people that are going to respect you, trust you, and look at you for who you are and respect you for who you are. Um, and but, that, that's very important, but it, I think that age group... Mm -hmm. Especially your the that teen, you know, your so many things in your life is changing. Right. And and if you haven't experienced something like this, this is a huge trauma for you to have to deal with and not probably don't know how to process it right. and how to deal with it. When I was in high school I didn't know what group I fit in. Do I fit in with the jocks? So I joined, you know, I wrestled in high school, but I didn't feel like that was my group. Mm -hmm. um, I got into playing drums and piano, so the band geeks, but that still wasn't my group. Right. Do I hang out with the really smart people? No, I wasn't the smartest, <laughs> the, the sharpest tech in the box. So no, I felt out of place with them. Uh, and then I hung out with burnouts. I hung out with the yeah. kids that, you know, were loners, that did drugs, that did other stuff. And in our school, they were the ones that smoked at the back of the high school. Right. So I was more of a loner, so that's yeah. who I associated more right. with. And went down a dark path. I started wearing black all the time, black t-shirt, mm -hmm. you know, just everything was dark. Right. Um, and that was a dark path point because I didn't know where I fit in I was just in the background and you know people talking about, if I had social media back then like there is now oh, okay. you and I would not be sitting here talking I would probably have taken my own life back right. then if I had that much pressure on me well and that's the thing too is what's different what we grew up if we were bullied as kids, we didn't have the social media. And the social media just intensifies things tremendously. And these kids, their brains aren't developed enough to know how to deal with it. Right. And like you said, if they're threatened, um, what are they going to do? Your program for your, your sixth to twelfth grade which that kind of falls within these kids that are, that's when so much changing goes on in your life. Right. And, and like you said, trying to figure out where you fit in or, you know, what you're doing. And if something goes awry immediately, what, what kind of tools do you give these kids at, so, in this age group? So for middle school and high schooler, you know, the, the older the group that I speak to, the more serious and the darker the message is. Mm -hmm. It gets into the consequences. You have choices. Are those choices going to lead you to sabotaging your future? Or are those choices going to lead you to having a successful future? Moving on to college, moving on to trade school, getting a career and things like that. Or are you sabotaging yourself to where you're getting hooked on drugs? You're, so. What, the older we get, the more freedoms we get. The pa our parents allow us to walk to school, ride our bike, go to a friend's house.
they don't monitor us as much as they should. You know, parents, please know who your child is talking to on the internet. You don't know if it's an adult. You don't know if uh, it's kids that are going to flip on them and be mean to them. And a lot of times, you know, th this is also at an age where kids start talking to each other in code. Mm -hmm. So all the text messages right. are in a code where the parents might not know what they're really saying to each other. You know, it's like my mom is in the room, there's a specific code, or right. they're here, I can't talk right now, let me talk to you later. Parents, look up, uh, and there's resources that are out there that you can look up uh, text message codes and know what they mean so that you know what your child is saying, who your child is talking to, are they going to hook up? <laughs> There's a right. code for that. Are they going to hook up with somebody? And what does that term hook up mean? What are they going to be doing? Right. Is it being sexually active? Is it doing drugs? Is it somebody that's grooming your child um, into being trafficked? And you need to be aware of what's going on and you know, pay attention to who they're texting or talking to on their phones as well as on, uh, on their social media sites. When I go into schools and I talk to kids, I talk about different choices that they have and we go over the pros and the cons. What are the consequences? Right. If you drink, what are the consequences? What's the worst thing that can happen to you? If you do a drug, that's why fentanyl is killing so many kids. Um, it can just be you could call it you could call it suicide or you could call it stupidity, <laughs> um, but they're trying it because they're again they're trying to fit in. Mm -hmm. They're being dared into I dare to do it or you're not part of our group if you're not going to do this. You know, yeah, you don't know what's being said that's pressuring this child into making a choice or a decision that can cost them their life. And typically they're not equipped to make those choices no. at the age. We have, well, uh, you mentioned um, trafficking. You know, Tampa Bay area is one of the highest areas in the country for sex, tra sex trafficking. And also the, uh, another thing that, that comes up that kind of ties into that is this sexting. And there have been so many incidences of somebody in just a short period of time grooming these kids over the internet, getting them to send them pictures of themselves and then weaponizing those pictures against them, right. trying to get money or more pictures and threatening to send it out to their friends, put it out on social media, and these kids don't know what to do and they end up taking their lives. And right. it could happen in a short period of time. That's why parents, you need to monitor e everything that your child is doing on their phones, on the internet. I mean, it and, it, and these people are so tricky. Yes, they are. And, you know, you have that term being a helicopter parent. Mm -hmm. You know, the... Be a helicopter parent. <laughs> <laughs> it's not we're, such a bad thing sometimes. <laughs> we're, we're living in a time where there's so many threats against people. How many of you have ever seen uh, the car that on the back of the car it's a sticker? Uh, yeah, with your family. With the family and everything else. That, and that's, how many animals they have. The, yeah. You know, their pets, what type of sports that they play and everything else. Right. What you're doing is you're letting a pedophile, you're letting a child groomer, you're letting somebody, that, a trafficker, know everything about your family, what they do, and they can look at a vehicle and say, they play soccer, they play hockey, they play football. Let me see where they go. Mm -hmm. They're going to do their homework. They're going to do their research. And if they see that your family is a dysfunctional family, or if they see you're one of those people that drops off your kid and goes and runs errand and comes and picks your kid up from soccer practice, whatever else, you don't stick around and pay attention or watch them. You just drop them off and, you know, that's their in at approaching your child and befriending them and then getting into their head saying, hey, I can provide you with a better life. Mm -hmm. 
giving them gifts, giving them whatever that make them feel good about themselves. Remember, kids are trying to fit in. Kids are looking for opportunities where people are respecting them. They're showing them attention. Right. And when you have somebody coming in giving them lots of attention and they get hooked like a drug, then they get hooked on drugs where it's a control thing. And then, oh, do you want me to tell your parents that you're doing drugs? No. Well, then you're going to have to do something else for me. Right. And they get sucked in, they get pulled in, they get sucked in, and they get pulled in until next thing you know, they're gone. And, uh, you know, trafficked kids, the only way that they can get out of being trafficked, by, you know, a, lot, a lot of times they're threatened. If you run away or whatever else, we will kill your family. Right. So they don't want to do that because of fear of something's going to happen to their parents or their, their siblings. Mm -hmm. So they've got nowhere to go. They have to do what they have to do, so they usually end up taking their lives. Right. It's an overdose of drugs, or they just say, I can't do this anymore. And, and that's it. Yes. So parents, be helicopter parents. <laughs> Pay attention. You know, within reason, give them some space, let them grow, let them become independent. But you have to have a communication with them that there isn't anything that, uh, you know, I would rather you get in trouble and be grounded for life than you get groomed and get taken into a world where there's no coming back. Sometimes there's no coming back. Yeah, we, there's just so many different threats out there to our children these days compared to like when I was a kid. It's just, I mean, we used to be able to just, and and this was just kind of the was expected go out and play don't come back until it's dark you know um but you can't do that no more right. you know uh, we live in such a different world and it it's it's scary it, it's so for high schoolers you know again i'm not going to talk about the childhood bullying stuff high schoolers now are driving right they're perceived at or looked at more of like an adult. I, 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 I ask girls that, get, that are getting ready to get their driver's license, 15, 16, 17 years old, and I go, how many of you have, while you're driving a car, been approached as by an older adult? Hey, baby, how are you doing? You know, uh, mm -hmm. because they, you're driving a vehicle, they assume you're older than you really are. And it's giving them the language, giving them the verbiage of saying, look, I'm a minor. You don't want to do anything with me. You know, right. it's, but again, they're just trying to fit in. They're wanting attention. They're liking the attention that they're right. getting. But is it truly good attention that they're getting? Or is it attention that's going to get them uh, in trouble, get them, put them in a uh, position that they're not going to like later on? Well, and these people that do that, that, that groom, they know what they're doing, and yeah. they are really, really good at it. So, they do their research and their homework. You know, it's, it, it, it just blows my mind. We, we were talking about um, the human trafficking at, uh, I think it was what, one of our Rotary meetings recently, and one of our, our new members. And so, and then this happens to people that, are older too, and this everybody needs to be aware of this. She was she was coming out of the grocery store. She had both of her hands had groceries in them, and this guy came right up to her, and she she is a, a pretty strong woman. She just told him, you know, you better back off. You're this is not going to end well. But she could tell he had parked his car right next to her car. Mm -hmm. He had been watching her mm -hmm. till she came out of the grocery store with both hands full. Right. So this is, you know, as we get older, when you're in high school getting ready to go to college. Now let's get into choices. We're talking about and choices that, that's again. That's another vulnerable age because... Now you're talking about the date rape drug. You're talking about rehypnol. You're talking about... Now you're on a college campus, sorority, fraternity, you're Again, actively... trying to fit into a group, trying to find your group. Right. And being pressured into doing things uh, that 
normally you wouldn't do, but you want to fit in. And what's the consequence of that action? So heroes in action, my company, it's your actions that make you a hero. So if you, the actions that you do, your choices are your actions. What are the consequences of those actions? Are, are they going to make you look like a hero? Or are they going to make you look like a victim? Or are they going to make you look like the bully, the, the person with bad intentions, the criminal? You have choices. Um, so parents, our goal is to help kids from elementary school all the way up through high school, college, learn how to be critical thinkers, mm -hmm. problem solvers, so that they can make good choices um, and identify good people from bad people so that they surround themselves with people that are going to respect them and uh, give them the, the trust and the love and the care and the friendship that they deserve, not the conditional if you do this for right. me, then we'll be a friend. It should be unconditional love, unconditional friendship. And they have to learn to decide what that looks like. If they don't know what it looks like, then they're just still trying to find that group that they can fit in. Right. And those college-age students, it's typically the first time that they've been out in the world without the supervision and without the guidance immediately per se. Right. So how much more difficult is that? That the message just got darker. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the message gets darker because now we delve into the what ifs. There's so many variables when it comes to personal safety, when it comes to you protecting yourself or a parent wanting to protect their child. You know, do I go to get a conceal and carry permit? Do I carry a knife, pepper spray, taser? Do I learn self-defense? Do I take a martial art? Do I, you know, but the variables always change. You know, a criminal, a bad guy, a bully is going to ask you one question. And that question is, what are you going to do about it? Mm. If I punch you in the face, what are you going to do about it? Yeah. If I take you to the ground and start taking off your clothes, what are you going to do about it? If I have a gun to your head or a knife to your throat and I'm trying to rob you or carjack you or uh, it's a home invasion or anything, if it gets darker, mm -hmm. what are you going to do about it? So now we're looking at or talking about getting specific training to deal with a higher level threat where the person is asking you, what are you going to do about it? If you don't have an answer for any, any of that, that's where we come into play, where we have programs for schools. It's um, zero tolerance, anti-violence. Uh, right. it's, it's more verbal de-escalation and raising awareness or situational awareness. Um, outside of a school setting where it's your physical being being threatened, dealing with an active shooter, dealing with a robbery or home invasion, that's when we get into the physical side of things about answering those questions. If somebody's choking me, what do I do about it? How do I answer that? Do what if there's multiple threats? What if there's more than one right. person right. that I have to deal with? Do you have, you have programs for that part of it, for the younger children to be able to take care of themselves. So I go how, to the schools. I go to the schools and do all do the, the, the the non-physical, non-physical stuff, de-escalation. And then I, I can set up an after-school program, or we have a training facility where parents can bring their kids, their families, or their friends in, mm -hmm. and get the physical training that they need to be prepared for when they go away to college or you know when they start driving a car um, How, what if my car breaks down we're here on near highway 19 <laughs> where you have homeless people all up and down 19 and your car breaks down and the next thing you know somebody's coming up do you need some help and you know right you don't know if this person has good intentions or bad intentions you know it could be somebody that's desperate that has a drug habit and they might think you have money or something that can help them out. You know, right. you don't know. Yeah, you don't. And it's 
in this day and age, it's getting it's harder and harder to tell. How young do you start with um, the the self defense? That out of school. The out of school where parents want their kids to learn how to physically protect themselves, typically ages five, six years old and older. Okay. Uh, you're looking at okay. Uh, a seven. And it's kind of hard. I I can't imagine. It's kind of hard to. A seven-year-old just... child is not going to be able to beat me, but a seven-year-old child should be able to get away from me. Right. Okay. It's not about you know beating somebody up. Right. Exactly. For civilians, the training is escape and get to a safe place. Right. How to, uh, how to escape different types of holds or different types of scenarios and get to a safe place. Law enforcement training is restrain, detain, arrest. Mm -hmm. Military training is eliminate the threat. So you're, <laughs> you're, you're not a law enforcement, you're not military, you're a civilian, child, teenager, adult. Learn to get away, first learn to identify the threat. Mm -hmm. Two, look at your options. Three, have a verbal plan. Four, have a physical plan. Five, have an exit strategy. You know, know where the exits are. So when you get on a plane, what's the first thing the flight attendant points out? The exits. Where the exits are. <laughs> Front, side, back. Right. When you go to a movie theater, before the movie even starts, they say, in case of an emergency, the exits are in the front, the side, or the right. back of the theater. Right. Okay? We teach you exit strategies and a big part of that is know where the exits are know where to go to get to a safe place where there's safe people that can help you and that's more and more important anywhere you go these days yes. and no matter what you do um, especially when um, we're at such a record high for mass shootings we have had way more mass shootings to date than we have days in the year right you know, I mean, that, that it's horrific, but, and uh, oftentimes, I mean, even though I've never been, knock on wood, involved with anything like that, but, you know, we're so inundated because we see it all the time on TV, wherever I go, I always look to find out where, see where the exits are, you know, especially being, you know, by myself most of the time. Um, you, it's just, and now, uh, you... And especially, you know, with, with what we do and, and in the community, it just, now it's almost like an automatic thing. It's just, just know where the exits are, how you're going to do things, no matter what you're doing, even if you're just going to the grocery store. <laughs> so, and this is again for all the parents out there listening, schools are mandated to have so many fire drills, so many right. uh, hurricane, tornado, intruder, active shooter drills. Parents, do you do those same drills at home with your kids? Do you do a fire drill at home with your kids so they know where to go, where to stand, so that they're accounted for, so that a family member doesn't run back into the house while it's on fire looking for the child? You know, Do all of the things, the drills that they do in school and in some place at work, do it at home with your family so that you're constantly keeping it at top of mind what to do in case of different types of emergencies. And it, it'll just become automatic, as, and the, especially with home invasions. Yes. You know, um, there, there have been um, reports of, you know, kids that they know what to do and they have actually saved their lives when somebody has invaded their home and they, they're home alone, but they knew what to do. So for home invasions, Playing the game with your kids, hide and seek. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's, that's very good, especially for the younger kids. <laughs> you gotta hide <laughs> because that person that's in that is seeking out things, okay? Find a good hiding place um, until you hear my voice, you know, the voice of the parent or law enforcement or whatever else, mm -hmm. then you can come out and say, I'm right. here, I'm here. But it's, it's playing different games with your kids that you don't want to scare them. Right. But you want them to understand, hey, we're going to play this game. 
Um, just in case somebody tries to hurt the family, I want you to also know that this is when you play hide and seek. You hide and you don't come out until you hear our voice. Right. Uh, but it's, it's playing those games to ensure that they are safe, that they know what to do. Right. Well, you have fight, flight, or freeze. The last thing you want is to freeze. Right. You don't, you don't want your child to freeze. You don't want yourself to freeze as a parent. Because if you freeze as a parent, then who's going to protect the child? Right. Yeah. And it comes down to the training that gives you the verbal, the physical plan, and the exit strategy to keep yourself and your family safe. Right. It's crazy what we have to know these days. There's no such thing. <laughs> There's no such thing as safe or unsafe places. There's only safe or unsafe people. And a big part of our training is teaching people how to identify if the person I'm speaking to or is approaching me is safe or unsafe. And I have lots of different role plays and examples that I do through my lectures and presentations that help people understand and learn how to identify a safe person versus somebody with bad intentions. Well, and we've so we focus pretty much with the kids because, like I said, um, school's coming up. And, but we did mention, you know, that bullying and I mean everything else doesn't isn't just kid specific. This co can happen throughout different stages of your life. So you have programs for women, business programs, seniors. Um, Tell us a little bit about those programs. So, uh, a, a rapist is a bully imposing their will mm -hmm. on a female. It's, it's not something that is looked at as, uh, it's more control and power. It's, it's not always um, somebody that's attractive, an attractive female, because there are rapists that rape kids, there are rapists that rape senior citizens. At, senior homes. Mm -hmm. So it's not about your appearance. It's about control and power. Right. Um, and it's a mental health issue. Uh, there's something that's not right with this person and you have to be able to see it, identify it, and keep your distance. So a good friend of mine, um, Jeff McKissick, gives this example. You're driving and you see somebody swerving all over the place. What are some reasons of why that person is swerving? You know, they're drunk, they're on drugs, they're yelling at their kids, they're texting. They they're, have a mental health issue. They're having a stroke or a heart attack yeah. or anything like that. But you're not going to drive up next to them and look to see why, okay? They're, you're looking at the behavior. Right. So it's learning how to identify a person's behavior that's going to decide whether that's a safe person to be around or not. Once you do that, then a big part of the women's self-defense is identifying behavior. Um, it's, it's where you have your gut, your sixth sense, your gut is telling you, I shouldn't be here. Right. Um, and, and then I, now I'm starting to look for those exits. <laughs> right. Now I'm starting to go, what am I supposed to say to get myself out of this? I don't want to say something that's going to escalate a situation. Right. I want to say something that's going to put the person on notice that, hey, I'm aware of you. I see you. I know what you look like. Um, I'm going to use words that are going to attract attention to get bystanders to see what's going on to me. Um, that's going to hopefully make that person not want to do anything because they don't want witnesses. Right. They don't want, yeah. So it's the verbal side, and then I have to also physically prepare myself in case it escalates. What do I do to hurt them enough? to get away, not to beat them up and say, come right. on, let's see what you got, right. but it's just to get away. Right. Uh, okay, programs for businesses. Bullying can happen at work. So you're, whether it's your boss, a coworker, um, it, it's, it's also, it could be your personal relationship at home. Uh, there, there's a story of a lady, this you know, happened in St. Louis, um, she was in a relationship, could be a boyfriend, could, could be a husband, where she had a restraining order against that person. But she didn't tell her family. 
She didn't tell her neighbors. She didn't tell her co co-workers about this mm -hmm. because she's embarrassed of the situation. Um, I, people don't need to know my personal business right. or whatever. Or I don't want people to judge me based on what I'm going through in my life. So she didn't tell anyone. She goes to work. The person with the restraining order comes to her work and says, Hey, it's her birthday. I wanted to surprise her. Can you tell me where she is? Coworkers, not knowing about the restraining order or anything else, are like, Aw, How sweet. I wish my husband or boyfriend <laughs> would come and surprise me while well, she's back in her little cubbyhole in the office back there. Um, why don't you go surprise right. her? He goes back there, murder, suicide. Mm -hmm. Kills her, kills himself. If she would have let family members, neighbors, close personal friends, and co-workers know they become her spidey senses. They become the eyes in the back of her head mm -hmm. where this guy comes to her work, hey, we're such and such, um, I want to surprise her. They know what he looks like because she's given them pictures. They know his card, license plate number. She's given them all that information. They can say, well, why don't you go into the break room and we'll send her, then you can surprise her in the break room. While he's in the break room, they tell her he's here. She gets out of Dodge. Right. They call the cops, they come in, he's in violation of restraining order, arrest him, check him for weapons and everything else, problem solved. She's alive, he goes to jail. Much different scenario. That talk saves lives. Yes, you have to let people in and not be afraid or embarrassed of what's going on in your life. It's getting that support system. Mm -hmm. Not being uh, ashamed of what's going on in your life. If you need help, you know, it's okay to ask for help. Ask for help. Let people help you that care about you. That's why it's so important. You want to fit into a group. Find a group of people that unconditionally love you and will be there for you and be the eyes in the back of your head to make sure nothing bad happens to you. Hey, you None of us can do this alone. This, none of us can do this life alone. No. Another, another part of our population that is very vulnerable and um, has a, a, a high rate of suicide are our seniors. Which is uh, that's sad. Um, we've done, since I've moved here to Florida, we've been able to do a lot of programs at senior homes mm -hmm. and for senior groups. And I had one lady that she was in tears. But she said, what do you do when the people that live around you, that you see every day, bully you? And what do you do when you report it and the staff that's there does nothing about it? And they actually look at it as, oh, there she is, complaining again. Mm. Um, and then they, too, become the bullies to this person that's a senior. They don't have anywhere to go. It's not like they can just pick up and leave and find another right. place to live. A lot of them are living on Social Security or, or whatever, the, or disability or whatever they have, and they're close to being homeless. Um, they don't know. So it's talking to them, what are the resources, who do I talk to, who do I go to. If the management isn't going to do, you know, you have to call law enforcement, you have to make it, uh, you know, file a complaint and bring law enforcement. If you have to call the news media, call the news media to bring it in light so that that organization that's taking your money um, actually fixes the problem. We all have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I want to live a happy life in my senior years. Right. And if I have somebody that's a neighbor, or if I have somebody that's supposed to be a caregiver that's looking out for all of us in an assisted living facility that's not doing their job, well, then I'm going to expose them for who they are, what they are, and I'm going to get them fired. And hopefully the new staff that comes in is going to be a more better staff that gives us better care. Yeah, but a lot of 
And I'm not saying they're all this way, but when you get to that stage in your life, I saw it kind of with my grandma, and and she was in she was in a phenomenal facility out in Oregon, but they don't speak up. They're afraid to talk. They're afraid to tell somebody what is going on. How how do you get past that? They they're afraid because they still want to fit in. Yeah, I was saying. They still uh-huh. want to be a part of a group. Right. They don't want to be um, isolated. They don't want to be the person that is oh they're the crabby old person that complains about everything. Right. They still want to have friends. I mean, throughout our whole life, it's about fitting in. Not rocking the boat. Well, I don't want to say anything because it might make other people mad. Who cares? But that's what gets us <laughs> into these bad situations is not saying something. Yeah. You know? If you uh, see something, say, say something. something. No matter uh, what uh, it is. If you see something happening to another person. Your action by getting up and calling 911 or your action by getting up and saying something, that's what makes you a hero. So you can either be a hero for yourself and say something and get the right kind of help and attention that you need to find a solution to the problem. If you don't say anything, guess what? It's going to keep happening. It's going to keep happening. It's going to keep happening until you can't take it anymore. Well, And that's where... Yeah, that doesn't. People happen. make a bad choice. And you can be a, you can be the voice for somebody else. Yes. If they can't do it for themselves, be the voice for that person. <laughs> so, you do classes and trainings and all this stuff throughout the community. So tell us, um, heroes in action, real quick. What they can do, how they can get a hold of you. Of course, we've been putting all the information up on the screen throughout the whole thing, but do a real quick... So if you could go to heroesinaction.us, H-E-R-O-E-S, inaction.us, that's our website. That's the best way to get a hold of us. You can call me. My cell is 314 314- Five seven zero zero two four three. I have a work number that's a Florida number seven two seven three one four two five three four. You can contact us. Everything that we do, all of our programs are free. That was one of my questions here. <laughs> Frequently asked questions: costs. Do you need special clothing? You want clothing that you can move around in, but ultimately you have to be able to learn how to protect yourself wearing your everyday clothes. That's absolutely true. Because you have to learn to adapt to the type of shoes that you're wearing. If you're in heels or whatever, uh, it's you have to be able to protect yourself in the everyday clothes. But starting out learning, you're going to wear more apparel that you work out in, workout apparel. Right. Um, as far as our fees, we're a nonprofit organization. Um, we do everything based on donations. Uh, we try the more money that we raise, the more programs that we're able to do. On a, we want to go more on a national level. If we go outside of Florida, then our only fee is travel expenses, right. airfare, hotel, rental car. Um, but my speaking fee and our seminar fees. We don't charge a dime. So everything that we do for schools, for communities, for businesses, for seniors is free. Hey, can't beat that. (laughs) Well, Ray, I want to thank you so much. Um, The wealth of information and the training that's available and everything, please go on his website, check out the website. I want to thank you for being such a great guest um, and bringing all this help to the kids in our community. It's it's needed everywhere. So I want to I wanna thank you so much for that. So I'm going to switch it up just so, for a couple minutes here. Um, but we're still going to have our hotline numbers and our positive quote. But this show um, is actually going to air um, August 5th, Saturday, August 5th, tomorrow, which happens to be my mom's birthday, but it's her first birthday in heaven. So I wanted to kind of 
dedicate this show to her. I hadn't been able to see her in a few years. The last time I saw her was Christmas, just before COVID. Um, that's my mom, my brother Troy, and my sister Trina and I. Um, it, right after I left there at Christmas, came back to Florida. Actually, I came back to Florida sick with COVID before they knew COVID was COVID. So I hadn't seen her since um, that Christmas. And um, we actually, we lost my dad five weeks before Bobby took his life. And I was supposed to go visit her and she ended up coming down to visit me for um, Bobby's celebration of life. Cage, if you could put it, that second picture of my mom, that, that was taken um, the night of Bobby's celebration of life. It was supposed to be like a six hour event that ended up being like 11 or 12 hours. <laughs> so um, I, was, I was glad she was able to come down, but it was a difficult uh, road for both of us going through um, major grief together. Uh, my dad's death was unexpected pretty much, and you know, along with Bobby's. And um, actually, I had to call my mom several years ago when my aunt suddenly died in a horrible car crash. And I had to call and tell her. My cousin called and told me. Well, I called my cousin to tell her what happened to Bobby, and she had to be the one to call and tell my mom that Bobby, her son-in-law, had just taken his life. So it, yeah, it's been pretty traumatic, but we always want to show our lifeline numbers. Please make sure you put these numbers in your phone. That the new number has been out for a year now. Uh, the 988 number is a call or text, and with that also the veterans press 1. Uh, make sure you have these readily available. I always tell people when I speak anywhere, I make them pull out their phones. Please put these numbers. You just never know when um, you may need them. And we always have a positive uh, message at the end of our show. This one is I think appropriate for our subject matter for the day is be a buddy not a bully it's really simple it's real simple and as we always end our show please remember there's always hope thank you